Welcome to the Better Than Cash Alliance webinar on Modelo Peru. I'm Ruth Goodwin Groen, the Managing Director of the Better Than Cash Alliance, and I am so proud today to be have such a wonderful group to share with you the experience of Modelo Peru. It is a totally unique partnership between 34 financial institutions in Peru that together built BIM, which is the world's first interoperable shared mobile payments platform. And if that doesn't rock your socks off, if you care about financial inclusion, I don't know what will. So we're super excited. We're in New York, and we know from your registrations that, that your, we have participants from every region of the world. So welcome to everyone, whether it's morning, noon, or night. I just want to first introduce our panel. We have the privilege of Carolina Trivelli. She is the Managing Director of Pagos Digitales Peruanos. That's the company founded by Modelo Peru that launched BIM. Carolina is an economist specializing in issues of rural development, but she's probably best known in Peru as the former Minister of Social Development. And she's been leading many of Peru's important social impact programs. Jeffrey Bauer is a digital finance and payment specialist. He's worked as a consultant for the Better Than Cash Alliance, providing leadership and strategy on our work on ecosystem development and payment systems, and has participated right from the beginning in the design of Modelo Peru. So welcome, Carolina and Jeffrey. Our other two panelists today, Arturo and Milton. Arturo Johnson is the Alternative Delivery Channels Manager of Banco de Credito de Peru. He has more than 30 years of experience in banking and was the Retail Banking Manager at BCP Bolivia and Operations Manager at BCP Peru. And so we're delighted that you're with us, Arturo. And Milton is the Deputy Manager of Payment Systems at the Central Bank of Peru and represents the Central Bank in the Multisectoral Committee on Financial Inclusion and he's head of the Payments Initiative for Peru's National Strategy on Financial Inclusion. So you can see we have a wonderful panel. So where we're going to go today, we're going to start off with an overview of Modelo Peru, and then we're going to look at its unique features, highlighting why it is so important for driving financial inclusion in Peru. Then we'll look at the rationale behind that partnership, what makes it so unique, the collaborative approach, and how they managed to actually build that partnership in Peru. Fourthly, we'll look at the issue experience. What are the benefits for a major commercial bank to participate in this uh, incredible partnership? And finally, we'll hear from the central bank about how this approach will accelerate the Peruvian government's efforts to create an economy where digital payments are widely available and everybody is included. That's a wonderful vision. So we'll, we're looking forward to this discussion. Just by way of background, for those of you who don't know the Better Than Cash Alliance, we're an alliance of governments, companies, and international organizations that accelerates the transition away from cash to digital payments. We do three things. We advocate for the transition from cash to digital payments. We conduct research and share the experiences of our members, and that's what we're doing today, because Peru is a founding member of the Better Than Cash Alliance. And we catalyze the development of inclusive digital payments ecosystems, which is why we were involved at the beginning of uh, Modelo Peru. We are super excited to share with you today what has been going on in Modelo Peru. And hopefully they'll, and there will be time at the end for you to uh, submit your questions. So as Anna said at the beginning, if you see on the right-hand side of your panel, there's a chat box. That comes straight to us, uh, the organizers. And so if you have questions as we go, then we can um, address them at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to go straight to Carolina to give us an overview of the Modelo Peru, this incredibly unique partnership. Carolina, over Thank to you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you to all for participating and for your interest. Modelo Peru is the name we gave to a partnership of more than 30 financial uh, institutions and uh, one enterprise issuing e-money in the country. And it's we built this, uh, this commitment to work together really to uh, be able to build a shared payments platform 
really focusing uh, in using this platform to build financial inclusion in the country. So we all together create this system, this plat com shared platform, and we create a common brand e-wallet called BIM. Why we did this? Because in this country, uh, we are a middle income country, and we've been growing for more than 15 years. However, uh, all of our, almost all of Peruvians have a cell phone, but only 30% of them have a savings account. So we want to use the benefit of having all the Peruvians already connected through the phones to improve our financial uh, inclusion levels. The goal uh, of Modelo Peru is to reach uh, 5 million clients in the next five years. We are just beginning. We have two, almost two months uh, in the market. And the, the main target of our program is to really reach the, uh, inform, the informal sector of this country, which is the one that presents the higher levels of financial exclusion. Um, we began with a partnership based on uh, the Peruvian, and, uh, of, based on an initiative of the Peruvian Bankers Association. And uh, we've afterwards created a company called Pagos Digitales Peruanos in which uh, participate not only the banks, but also the formal microfinancial institutions in the country and the main national payments bank. Um, the, the idea was not only to create a, a, a new payment systems, but to really create, develop a digital payments ecosystem. So what we have in, in Modelo Peru today is uh, three, three steps that we want to achieve. First, for sure, develop an alternative payment system through our, the use of cell phones. Uh, secondly, to really bring the people into this uh, new way of, of doing payments and building a digital payments ecosystem, and thirdly, to develop and offer new products and services from the financial sector to this new set of uh, customers. And what we really want to achieve with this is more financial inclusion for all in this country. By working together, the institutions in Peru realize they have a better chance at developing a value proposition that would really attract people away from cash. What we've been doing uh, since the launch on February uh, 16 uh, is uh, Pagos Digitales Peruanos as a central unit, but especially the e-money issuers, nine e-money issuers working, are, that are already working with Pagos Digitales Peruanos, uh, we've been uh, trying to reach a significant amount of clients to really begin using BIM. So what you see in the, in the slide is that we already have more than 50,000 accounts uh, active, so we need to uh, begin working with those account holders to make them use actively uh, BIM. Uh, we'll, we'll see more data in the future. We are just uh, near two months in the market. Carolina, that is so exciting. You only just got into the market and you already got uh, 53,000 accounts. So we're super excited uh, to hear that, that there's been such tremendous take up. Uh, congratulations. So what we're going to do then after that, the, the, the great vision for really reaching everybody with uh, uh, financial services in Peru, Jeffrey, why don't you tell us the key elements of this uh, innovation? Sure, I'd be glad to. So everyone wants to know what makes Modelo Peru unique and why the program is well positioned to meet the main challenge of payment systems, which is achieving scale while also being able to increase financial inclusion. The partnership behind Modelo Peru built BIM just to do exactly that. The first and most important element is collaboration. Yes, 34 highly competitive, profit-seeking adversaries actually came together to build one shared platform. Carolina will speak more about what competitors together in this way, but collaboration is the distinguishing characteristic that all other elements of the model rely on, and this is what really makes the model unique. In order to compete, the institutions in Peru realized that first it was necessary to collaborate. 
Modelo Peru is a shared payments platform in which all participating financial institution issuers can connect to. By using one provider, and in this case it was Ericsson, the cost to design, customize, and implement was lower than each institution went on its own. This meant from day one, payments flow between issuers across multiple networks and new features, security updates, and other new services are instantly available to all the issuers and the customers at the same time. Members of Modelo Peru also developed a shared brand, and this is where you can really see how collaboration was game-changing. Whereas in most markets, mobile money providers compete at the brand level, in Peru, BIM is a shared brand available to all of the issuers. This means customers see the same brand over and over and over from trusted institutions. Merchants only need to say, we accept BIM to be able to accept payments from their customers. It doesn't matter which bank or which financial institution they're with or which telephone network they're on. And you can see all of the examples of the marketing that were just shown on the screen. BIM is purposefully the same for all users. Everyone has account to the same transactions. I mean, everyone has access to the same transactions. A phone and a national ID is all you need to open an account without even having to go to a branch or to an agent. When issuers explain the product to their customers, they're all explaining the same services. Everyone can put funds into their account, take funds out of it, recharge airtime, and send money. Customers don't get confused by different menus, naming, or features option offered. The same is true for fees. There is one standard fee set. Everyone charges the same low fee to their customers. When there is one clear standard fees for all issuers, this builds trust with their, with their users, which we know is essential to increasing adoption. In Peru, the leading banks built a well-established network of more than 18,000 agents. What's exciting is that they decided to share all of these as part of the BIM program. Customers from one bank can use the existing agent of another bank to both deposit and withdraw funds. This business works when transactions take place. In order to do that, the platform has to be ready to accept all kinds of payments. So the platform is designed to be open to all kinds of issuers, to new payment systems, and whatever comes both in the future and from beyond. The goal of the company behind BIM, Pagos Digitales Peruanos, is actually not explicitly revenue generation. The company does intend to be profitable, but the primary focus is to enable transactions payments for the issuers and their customers. Modelo Peru took place in a framework of increasing financial inclusion. The idea was to get people who have never used formal financial services to try and then to adopt digital financial services through their mobile phones. Modelo Peru is intentionally focused on the needs of those financially excluded users and so it was built, designed and optimized for their needs and for their experiences. Together, a shared platform, a shared brand, a shared product, a shared feed structure, and a shared agent network combine to form a program that gives customers a simple product that is available nationwide, it provides the government a solution that advances their vision, and leads issuers and financial institutions uh, with an innovation that they're able to build upon. Jeffrey, that is such <laughs> Uh, such an amazing uh, set of uh, features for Modelo Peru. I'm sure that there'll be lots of questions to understand that, uh, that a bit more at the end. So thank you so much for that summary. As we can see on the screen here, there are more than 30 financial institutions that, are, that, that came together in Modelo Peru. So Carolina, let, can I come back to you and ask, what were the conditions that made such, a, such an interesting partnership, such a tremendous uh, innovation there in terms of the partnership? What were the conditions that, brought, that made this possible? Well, in what it seems unlikely, altogether these uh, more than 30 financial institutions and e-money issuers in Peru cooperated and shared resources to build a payments platform design with the intent to bring more people into the formal financial service system. Instead of competing, the entities in Peru saw the value of cooperating are actually cooperating to be able to compete in the future in this new market, forming a deep partnership through the Peruvian Bankers Association at the beginning and then uh, expanding this uh, partnership to include the microfinancial institutions and the public bank. Instead of, spend, of spending resources building their own systems, they jointly invested and built just one instead of fighting 
over customer ownership, they shared access to agents, branches, and in the future through uh, to ATMs. Instead of, comp of, a com of competitive marketing campaigns and mixed messages, they work together under a new brand to attract their individual target customer segments to the new common payment product. They did this because they recognized that collaboration would yield better results than going at it alone. They also realized that competing with non-financial institutions would be challenging on an individual basis. So they realized that there was a huge value in really uh, working together. Great. So what I'm hearing you saying is that they realized the value was for financial inclusion, but it was their own bottom line as well. So they could collaborate to begin with to, to compete later. So what you're leading this initiative. So what have been the challenges that you've experienced in, in establishing and maintaining this partnership behind BIM? <laughs> well, the, the, the challenges are all around this, this initiative, but that's what makes it so unique. Well, the, the main issues were actually bringing competitors to sit together and to build something uh, collaborative, and that's not uh, easy at any point, but it's possible as, as we're working. Um, some, of, some of the entities didn't uh, really want to have uh, to impose some of their visions, and it's, it's difficult to sit together with 34 uh, institutions and in a democratic way find the right results. And uh, some other players who should have a big interest in, in leading do not or not or cannot play in an active role. So there, there's it's it's a new channel, it's a new market. So we are still uh, seeking for all the players to be aligned. Uh, smaller players want uh, a larger voice in, in the design, and we need to build that space all together. And some of the business interests sometimes. Uh, are a bit conflicted with the main goal of doing this for financial inclusion. As uh, the partnership is really unique, the regulations were not really designed to enable this model. So this, uh, we've been working with the regulators, the financial regulators, the telecom regulator, regulator and the central bank to really make this happen in the more, uh, not only legal, legally and regulatory right way, but also in, in a way that really enables this to go through. Uh, all the discussions about how to share and do the settlements were very complicated because we are a lot of <laughs> institutions involved. But overall, all the entities saw the value and wanted for the program to work. So we keep trying and we keep working and for sure we will be able to really achieve what we thought, what we are expecting to, to achieve. Yes, Carolina, you mentioned there's the, the business agenda between all the different players, but then also the dealing with the regulators and because obviously this is a, such a unique partnership that I'm sure they didn't think of this when, when all the email <laughs> money regulation was uh, was launched there. So I'm sure we'll have lots of questions about the regulation part of it. But let's just drill down on the on the partnership. Could you just give a, a, some more specificity about some of the key decisions that you think led to success for Modelo Peru? Well, uh, talk about the points Jeffrey raised and touch on how agreements were made uh, different kinds of entities to agree. Collaboration, common platform, one brand, common product, clear fees, pool agents, shared value, open, cost recovery, and financial inclusion focus. Uh, so for this, uh, the key decisions focus around elements that would really drive value to the end bank consumer. Heavy focus on the consumer perspective. Uh, needs and interest of someone who cannot afford to pay more or take the time to decide. Uh, so simple things are, are uh, key for this solution. Um, so we, we try to really uh, listen to our target customer to understand what they really need and how we could really use their demands to drive our activities. Goal, the goal was to work together to build a compelling, a compelling value proposition, to move away from cash. 
and to attract uh, payers and payees to this new system. It's, it's a big challenge because it's a completely new service. So the focus was, uh, was to figure out what services were the ones that were more useful, more demanded, and the ones that the people really want to, uh, to use through this new uh, payment system. I think that that's something that is really interesting is how much thinking about the ultimate customer, you know, uh, a woman entrepreneur or who is receiving a, a, a government payment uh, far away from Lima who is what works for her in the way that the uh, interface is designed. So. Maybe you can talk uh, about that a bit more, how the financial inclusion, how including those who've previously been excluded from the system was a, was a tool to spark this collaboration. Well, actually, when, when we began talking about this collaborative effort, the financial inclusion goal was a general desire. But when we began really understanding the needs of the vast majority of Peruvians that are not working uh, through the financial system, when we really begin to realize the potential of helping people to move out of cash and beginning to use new ways of doing payments and hopefully in the future uh, getting new and a diverse bundle of products and services from the financial sector uh, was part of a larger discussion in the country and in the, within the financial sector it became a, a present discussion because the levels of financial exclusion are still very high and are not going down as quick as we decide. So BIMIS met is, is not meant to compete with whatever the financial sector is already doing. Whoever is working with the financial sector maybe will not need uh, to use BIM to improve their opportunities or to take advantage of new opportunities or to improve their livelihoods. However, uh, the 70 percent of Peruvians that is not working with the financial sector really is demanding a new solution to uh, improve their livelihoods. So the goal is to complement and to help whatever banks and microfinancial institutions in the country are doing to really reach this uh, financially excluded population with a service that really could provide an option to cash that it's really helpful for these people. Uh, it's, it's, and, and for that, we need to really understand what are the use cases that our target population really requires and with what use cases they, they will be able to test something new. So it also helped to simplify the agreements between banks and, and, and to pull the discussions away of, of the competition among them because what, would we, what we really want is to give um, a new type of service to a new set of clients. It's not that we are working with the existing clients in the financial sector. That's a great segue to Arturo from BCP, who's one, it was one of the biggest banks in Peru that, and has been one of the key participants in Modelo Peru. So Arturo, why is it in the interest of a major commercial bank like yours to participate in this collaborative initiative? Why not go it alone? Arturo, we would love to hear from you. If you could unmute, that might be helpful. While we wait for Arturo to, to join us, I just the experience, as you can see from the slide here, he was due to talk about his experience, uh, the experience of BCP in uh, trying other collaborations first. Uh, Arturo, I'm going to try one last time, and then I'm going to ask Jeffrey to give us a bit more background. Can you can you unmute? Can you join us, Arturo? Okay, Jeffrey, can you give us a, a little bit of background that uh, 
on this uh, on BCP's experience? Sure, sure, I'd be happy to do it. Um, BCP is a bank that's been interested in participating uh, in digital payments since really the beginning of, of the efforts in digital payments uh, in Peru. Um, as the leading bank in Peru, they're always exploring and looking for new innovations, trying to create new channels, and be, and be able to meet the changing needs of their customers. And in a country where there's only, as Carolina said, 30% of the country that are banked, they realize there's a great opportunity in banking the rest. And so between 2009 and 2014, they worked on a number of different initiatives in electronic money, and they intensely explored other market successes like in Kenya and the Philippines to learn about their, their successes in digital payments. They also partnered with non-traditional players like Telefonica and MasterCard, but in the end concluded that based on the way that the market is structured in Peru, there are challenges inherent for one financial entity to reach scale. And it would not, these kinds of programs and partnerships would not lead to the kind of success that BCP is looking for. So they decided to take a new approach. They, decided, they made a strategic decision to pursue a collaborative solution and to share the expense, the risk, uh, and all of the other uh, elements of designing the program together because it would have a much higher chance of creating a product that was able to create new business for them uh, and increase business opportunities for their Peruvian customers. So, so go ahead, Ruth. I was just going to say, we've got the slide here on, on making collaboration happen in BCP. So uh, can you just give us a little background on what happened inside uh, BCP to make, this, to make them such uh, active participants? So uh, uh, Banco de Crédito de Peru was one of the founding members of the Electronic Money Committee um, that was developed at the Peruvian Bankers Association. And it was that electronic money committee that began to discuss in great detail uh, all of the points that I, Jeffrey, mentioned earlier on in the presentation uh, in order to come to agreement. And so this included topics like, should we share our ATM network? How do we share our agents? What does the design of the settlement and compensation process look like? Which is the right kind of platform to use? Uh, this is just to mention a few of the considerations that were discussed at the time. And as what Arturo has told me, it wasn't always easy, but that constant reminder that it was necessary to collaborate in order to have the opportunity to compete um, kept the discussions going. And so even post the launch of the platform, there are opportunities to use uh, uh, coordination mechanisms with the other, the other issuers in the program to build a simpler experience for the customer like potentially adding the names of the customers in the transactions notification. And since each of the issuers are part owners of, uh, of BIM, they actively participate in the development and improvement of the program to create new transactions to meet their customers' needs. Great. So there was the incentives for collaboration, but also allowing or facilitating competition Right. So it's important to say that, that collaborating uh, is, is key, but also being able to leave an area for the issuers to be able to compete is really an important element as well. So a key element to success was the fact that financial institutions retain that ability to separate the collaborative elements from the competitive. Each entity contributed what they could uh, to create that space to complete, but were given the opportunity to generate profit and be able to find their own uh, market segments that they want ah, to Arturo, are you here? Jeffrey, Arturo, I'm so glad that you're back. We are just yeah. about to go so onto the, the slide uh, that summarizes all of your experience from a financial institution perspective. So uh, after the competition slide, as you can see just coming up now, it's what uh, financial institutions can learn. And so this is a great opportunity for you to provide uh, your perspective on what other banks around the world can okay. learn from your involvement in BIM. Okay, I would like to share with you the most important learning that we get from BIM or uh, electronic wallet. First of all, remember, this is evolution, not revolution. The change should start by the leaders of the banks. We are still learning how the system works, how the ecosystem behaves, and more important, how the customer interacts in the transition from cash 
to cashless. Secondly, what not less important, failure actually helps. In my point of view, it's better, it's better to develop a project, launch the beta version, and initiate the results, and then decide if it is ready to go public, and if it's not ready, learn from that experience so your next attempt will be successful. New channels get new customers. We are getting the new customers and learning through data about their behaviors. So in the future, we can offer them all their relevant products and services. Most of us are concerned about acquisition costs. And I'm sure that for you, just as is for us, the cost is too high. So in order to make it cheap, e-wallet is a great option. The best way to get better deals with providers is centralized negotiation, in this case, with CDP. Real teamwork is key. Compromise, involvement, and open mind with other help. Most customers don't have a degree in economics or work for a bank. So speak them in their own language is very important. And the last but not least, choose the right person to lead. Atara, uh, I'm sure any business school would be delighted to have you lead with those uh, amazing uh, uh, eight lessons for other financial institutions, and uh, we'll be able to come back with a bit more, with a few more questions for you um, at the end. Let me now move to uh, to Milton. From a government perspective, you've got lots of different hats at the central bank on the Financial Inclusion Committee, so. How is the government uh, planning to digitize its payments, and how is how do you see BIM helping uh, government achieve its goals? Thank you, Ruth. I want to thank also Better Than Cash Alliance for inviting me to participate in this webinar. As has been discussed, Modelo Peru is a collaborative effort by the financial sector to implement a mobile payment initiative based on electronic money in the context of enabling a regulatory framework for e-money. BIM, as it's also called, is an innovation that has changed the Peruvian retail payments landscape by introducing real-time and ubiquity in retail payments, making it easier to people to access and use payment services. The Central Bank of Peru promotes security and efficiency in payment systems, as well as access and usage of electronic payment services. It has been participating in the drafting and implementation of the National Strategy on Financial Inclusion in collaboration with other uh, public institutions like the Minister of Finance, the Bank Authority, and the Minister of Social Inclusion. This pioneering, pioneering uh, strategy focuses on seven key lines of work that combines public and private sector efforts in order to achieve financial inclusion. For each line, there is a working group in charge of attaining a challenging set of a specific goals. One of the lines of work is payment, because in spite of the presence of well-established payment infrastructures in Peru, and ongoing efforts in regulatory uh, framework, most retail payments are still done in cash, due to limited access to financial services, among other issues. The Central Bank is responsible for the line of work on payment, and it chairs the working group on payment that will promote the development of digital channels and retail payments instruments to achieve its goal. The working group on payment will rely on public and private sector collaboration on a wide variety of solutions, and Modelo Peru, enabled by a broad partnership, will have an important role in the efforts to foster financial inclusion. The specific actions on payments will promote an expansion of the communication infrastructure, foster an electronic payments network and integrate merchants, and big consumer uh, good firms, goods firms, implement digital payments for the government transactions, strengthen the regulation on electronic payments in order to promote security and efficiency, and discourage the use of cash, among others, in the case of foreign remittances. The idea is to create a payment ecosystem that enables access, innovation, and use Modelo Peru will likely play, and we think, we are sure that Modelo Peru will play an important role in this ecosystem. 
We have been working to attain the goal set in the National Strategy for Financial Inclusion. For example, on digitizing government payments. There are two studies already underway. One of them at the national level and the other at the regional and local level to determine the best strategy to digitize payments that are not already made by electronic channels. On the private sector, it is already working on developing a specific payment type to meet the government's needs, including tax collection and social transfer. As we can see, Modelo Peru will have an important role in the national efforts on financial inclusion. Its direct benefits, including those mentioned before, like ubiquity, easy of access, interoperability, a large network of agents, will need people to open accounts, providing a secure and efficient solution to millions of people who live or work far from bank branches or are self-employed, so it is too costly for them to leave their workplace. As a result, Modelo Peru provides innovative ways to accomplish Peru's financial inclusion objectives. In this case, I would like to congratulate Carolina and her team on the implementation of Modelo Peru, which more than a technological innovation is a new way to do business by integrating all the stakeholders in the creation of a new infrastructure for retail payment in order to foster financial inclusion in Peru. Milton, thank you. Yes, we are excited to ha hear your vision about building an ecosystem where there's not uh, where there's not cash, where people are able to use uh, the, their digital, uh, this digital platform and other um, digital solutions uh, in their everyday lives. So thank you. We're now uh, uh, coming to the discussion, and I want to get back to you, Arturo, because there's a, a question that came, and you didn't have so much time earlier. So how do you build a profitable business when the focus has been on collaboration? So where how do you view that as a, as a large financial service provider? Um, well, um, we, we coming from many uh, failure projects, okay? And uh, we, take, we took a strategic decision, okay? And we discovered that work together is going to be better than making it alone. And uh, this strategic decision was based in that we discovered that if we share our expenses and our risk, we can get we can get the the, the better results. And the vision of new business opportunity for the Peruvian can be better. That's great. So what I'm hearing you saying is that you know by collaborating you increase the, the the use of BIM throughout the whole country, and then you're able to to build on that uh, that incredible network with with your own uh, product. So it's great that that you're going to be reaching the, the whole country. So Carolina, you are the managing director of this company that's launched Modelo Peru and that is uh, had this amazing beginning. So what? I'm sure there are lots of people who are inspired by this uh, story. So what advice do you give, the most important piece of advice you give to anyone who's thinking, this is a great idea. I want to do it in my country. Well, thank you, Ruth, and thank you for the words of my colleagues on, on the work we are doing. Uh, I think the main, the main issue here is to really spend enough time and enough effort in building a shared objective. If we all agree in that the goal of the project is to really achieve financial inclusion and to build a road that could uh, allow us to reach that objective, uh, all together recognizing our differences uh, and our different objectives and the need of you know investing but reaching some point in which we stop losing money to really make this sustainable we will all be in a good uh, platform to really uh, engage in, in, in a project like this one however one major thing that we all need to uh, be completely sure of is that we need to be very patient and that we need to have patience in defining the goals and the timing we will need to really achieve the major objective of reaching financial inclusion. 
Mm -hmm. the, 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 the objective of financial inclusion. Milton, let me just come back to you as uh, from the government's committee on financial inclusion. You've had lots of partners such as the Inter-American Development Bank and the World Bank and other uh, partners who are together with the government looking at financial inclusion. Can you just talk a little bit about that uh, collaboration with the government or the, how that's worked through the, the uh, leadership of the National Committee? Well, uh, at the committee, we are very um, excited to see that many um, international organizations are participating with us in building a better um, financial inclusion uh, framework for people in Peru. And we have received, for example, the help of uh, Better Than Cash in one of the studies that we are doing on digitizing uh, government payments, which is a very interesting uh, area that we are going to develop in the coming years. And Modelo Peru is going to help us in that, I am sure. And also the World Bank, IDB, are partners that are, are always with us uh, on our way to build a better uh, financial inclusion uh, regulation and infrastructure. And also, as we saw in the first slide, there are many areas. For example, we are working also on credit insurance and basically also, which is very important, on deposit. And at the same time on, on other areas that uh, we are receiving the help and um, the, the help of international organizations like the one that you lead. Great, yes, we're, we're delighted to be partnering with the government as well as with uh, uh, Modelo Peru. Carolina, you had mentioned that uh, one of the challenges earlier was dealing with the regulations. What's, what's the secret to, to, to having a collaborative relationship with the regulators? Well, I think uh, there are two secrets here, actually three. The first one is that uh, to begin with, we have, uh, we have a very good uh, law that regulates the characteristics of e-money for financial inclusion. It's not just a regulation for electronic payments or for uh, e-wallets. It's a regulation uh, designed to really promote the use of electronic money and electronic payments for financial inclusion. It's a very modern law and it's a very open law for, uh, to keep uh, improving the, the regulation. And then we work with the, with the regulator since the beginning. Since day one, we involve in all our, our discussions uh, the regulators, the financial regulator, the central bank, and the regulator of the telecommunication sector. Those three regulators working together with us are, have been very involved in the decision-making process and the design process of Modelo Peru. And in, based on that, we were able really to uh, w develop the right uh, missing parts of the, of the regulation and to improve whatever the, it was uh, stated in the law. And the third right. pillar is that three regulators were completely aligned with the objective of financial inclusion. So they had the will to really make this work. Thank you. Jeffrey, I'm going to give you the last word. Uh, what's your advice? The ecosystem uh, agenda is vitally important for, to, for this partnership, the vision of this partnership. Can you just uh, help us understand how important that is? Uh, my view on it is that there's no business if people aren't transacting on your platform. And so all participants in, in a platform like this or in the development of a, of a digital payments ecosystem really need to think very long and hard about how to bring people into the system. And once you have people using it, once you have uh, participants transacting digitally, then that creates the opportunity to build businesses and build uh, uh, revenue. If you don't build that foundation of, of a base upon which you, the institutions participating in the programs can actually be able to, to compete, uh, you don't really have that much. So thank you very much uh, for your support. 
so this is the first or uh, one very big first step for developing a, a digital payments ecosystem in Peru. And we're delighted to have been able to share this experience with you. And watch out for hearing the next installment when we hear how it's going in Peru. Thank you to Jeffrey, Carolina, Milton, Arturo for such a fascinating webinar. And uh, we look forward to you, uh, your progress hearing on it. And we wish you every success. Thank you so much. And have a great day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thanks again from the Better Than Cash Alliance.